G'day team. Well, it's an exciting day at Built to Fish because we have just taken possession of our brand new 8 metre Surtees Game Fisher diesel inboard. And of course, the first thing we have to do is rig up our Bonds outrigger poles from Kilwell, get them all ready for the game season. So I figured if I'm going to be rigging my boat from scratch, I might as well make a video for you guys talking you through how we rig a boat for game fishing. So I've got my Kilwell carbon outriggers. I've just put a five foot extension on them. I used a little bit of uh, two pot epoxy resin, Aerodite, five minute. I, uh, I masked them up, I glued them in. I figured I didn't need to film myself that, doing that for you guys. And what I'm gonna do now is put the pulleys on my eyes for our halyard system. We're going to run three halyards. We'll be running our long lures out of the top halyard, and we'll be running our short lures out of the second halyard, and out of the third halyard, we'll be running our teasers. So we'll chuck on our pulleys. These are just Ron Stan pulleys, they're available from Bonds. Just got a little D shackle system, they're very easy to put on, just a simple flathead bolt. Let's grab my screwdriver. Um, however, once you've put them on, there's a trick to it. There's a trick to do that stops them. These are designed to spin, which stops you getting tangles when you're out on a boat with a single line running through it. However, because we're gonna be running an infinity loop through our pulley, we don't want it to spin because if there's a loop there and it spins, we'll get a twist in it. So what we do is we tighten it up nicely and we go and grab some Narva cable ties. You take, the you take the zip tie through the base of the D-shackle, through the base of the pulley, chuck it in there, pull it tight, and you'll see that that stops that pulling. It'll, it'll twist off a little bit, but it stops it spinning round and round and that'll stop you getting tangles. See to clip the end of that zip tie off and you're away. So I'm gonna put pulleys on my top three guides and they'll be running my two lure halyards and my teaser halyard. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So that's my short, either short corner or long corner. Once we start, putting the halyards on, it's worth noting that we're creating a starboard and a port rigger and you'll need to label them as such because each outrigger is gonna be designed specifically for that side of the boat. And the reason for that will become clear as we rig up our halyards. Seems like a simple thing to do, putting these zip ties on to stop these pulleys twisting. But you'll thank me when you're at the boat ramp in the dark, trying to untangle your halyards. So you can see there, stops it twisting. Okay, all four of our extra pulleys are done. These Kilwell poles come with the top pulleys on, and they're a smaller system that stops them from spinning, so we don't need to do those. So. We're now ready to drop the poles into the rigger bases and start with doing our longest halyard. It's gonna set up how the rest of our halyards go, so it's important to get that right. So these Kilwell poles are super light, nice to put in, and they fit perfectly in that base. We're we gonna have enough space? All right. So that's cool. So what we've got to get right now is our top halyard length. So I'll grab some Bonds Black Rigger Mono and a triple hell lock. So you're going to need two of these triple hell locks available from Bonds Lures. And the first thing I do when I get one of these is I cut off that bungee. 
and we're going to replace it with a piece of cord that will have no stretch in it. And we're going to tension our riggers. On my boat I'm going to tension them with a pull through cleat system from Endeavour Engineering. But you can also use a self tensioning cleat that Bonds Lures also sells. So we've got our power lock, we've got our cord, and we'll just check we're going to have the right lengths there and then we'll get our halyards on. Let's go. So I'm just replacing that bungee, bungee on my triple hell lock with a piece of black spectra. There we go. That will form the base of our halyard. Okay. We've got our triple halyard hell lock ready to go. And now we'll get our length for our top halyard right. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our halyard up through the first guide and each of the pulleys. And then we're going to come down through the top and we're going to connect to one of our R&R downrigger clips available from Bonds Lures. These are the best outrigger clips on the market. Then we'll bring the other end of the halyard through the hell lock pulley and we'll come up and attach to the other side of the outrigger clip and that way we can use the halyard itself to get the correct tension. We'll start by going with the halyard through our hell lock and our longest halyard is always going to be the top pulley. So when your poles are out, you're going to be running the pulleys in order of longest to shortest. So the top one is going to be your long halyard, the next one is going to be your shorter lured halyard, and the bottom one is going to be your teaser halyard. And that way we can bring in and change our lures independently without having to take the other lures in and out. Um, it'll all make sense as we go. But so we're starting with the starboard side. Our halyard's gonna sit, our hell lock's gonna sit like that. So we're gonna start with our top pulley. So we feed through that. That's correct. We go through our guides. So we go through the guides on for our top one and then through the top pulley. So when I'm doing this, I give myself a ton of extra halyard. I'm already getting a bit of a tangle with my chop. But I've got lots of excess, and what you don't want to do is do all your rigging and then realise that you're a bit short, so I give myself a lot of extra. So now, I'll take my pulley, and you'll see that these run starboard and port. So when you get when you open your R2 outrigger clips, if you look here, there's a little P or an S. So make sure you get the right one. We're doing our starboard one, so we'll use the starboard. And you'll see that there's a little bead at, at the bottom of one side of the clip, and that's the one that you want to go on the bottom. So, we're coming from the top of our rigger, so we go to the other end, take one of our copper crimps, we use copper crimps just because they look fancy. Let me crimp, got that the right way around, crimp that bugger on. Don't really have to do this, but it's a good habit to be in. That's the melting bit I mean. Pull that tight. It's nice and snug. That's the right way around. Ready to crimp. Very nice. Okay, so now what I'll do, before I attach this through the hell lock, I'm gonna trim off some excess outrigger mono at the other end. I'm gonna put the outrigger back into the outrigger base and I'm gonna get the correct tension on my poles before I finish it all off. So, I'll trim off a nice bit of extra rigger. There should be plenty. 
What I quite like to do to keep it all tidy is I'll just grab one of my crimps and I'll put it through the bottom of the clip and just pull a whole lot of tag end through. And that won't slip out and it just keeps everything a little tidier because it can all go a bit haywire once you put the pole in the base. And just to make it a bit easier, I'll put the base up before we do it. So we've got our halyard just snugged in there. We'll drop our pole in. So that looks good. That's down how we're going to be running them. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my hell lock, I'm going to secure it in my boat, and I'm going to get the length how I want it for this piece of cord. So I'm probably going to want these at full tension about here. So I will adjust my halyards accordingly. So that's a nice length. It means I can, I've got a little bit of give if there's a bit of stretch in the halyards over time. But it also means that uh, I can still, still get to my halyards to adjust them. So what I'm going to do, it's as simple as taking this crimp and just feeding the line through it to get tension onto your, you can actually take it right off now and put it on in a sec, but I'm just adjusting the tension of the halyards to get the amount of tension that I want on my poles. And I'll come down there now that we're putting some decent tension on it and get ready to crimp it off when I'm happy with where it's sitting. So what I'm looking for when I'm setting the tension on my poles is I want there to be a nice consistent bend in my poles. These Killwell riggers are nice and stiff, but I want my poles to be stiff so that when I get a bite, I get a nice crisp release. So if you look up at this pole, as I pull on that tension, you'll see it getting, starting to get a nice bend. So that looks about right to me. If I pull that through the crimp now, just to have a check. The beauty of doing it with the crimp on the line like this, you're gonna have to do that anyway when you're crimping, is that I can actually lock it off by pushing it up here. You don't wanna do it too much because you'll get kinks in your line, but you can slide that up there and lock it off and that won't go anywhere. So you can actually have a decent look at it. I'm happy with that. Crimp that off and our top halyard is done. And the, the reason you want to get this top, well, you want to get all of them right, of course, but the reason the top one's really important is because the tension of the rest of your halyards is based off the tension of your top one. So that's all sealed off. Unlock that, and you'll see that's nice and easy to adjust. My clip's the right way around. And we're good to go. So, top halyard's done. Snip that off. And now, we'll pull that off and we will run our corner halyards. So that looks good. I'm happy with that. And the beauty of my pull-through cleat system is if I want to make it tighter, I simply just pull that through the cleat and that'll tighten up nicely. But that's pretty good. That's a nice stiff setup. Got a nice big gap here and it's nice and easy to access. So we're in good shape. So we'll pull that down, do our next one. So same again, now that we're doing our next halyard down, we're going to go from the top to the middle pulley on the hell lock. It's really important you do this because it's going to make your riggers and halyards so much easier to use. Because you'll be able to pull your lures in and out while the rest of your gear is still out. If you get it the wrong way around, Every time you want to pull a lure in and out to change it or check it or whatever, 
you will have to pull all your lures in. So it'll be unusable. So we go through the halyard, through the hell lock, through each of the eyes, up to our second pulley, which is our corner pulley. Make sure we go the right way through it, which is through the bottom, out through the top. And now we come back to our hell lock. And now we've got a fairly good idea of how much line we're gonna need. So you don't have to cut quite as much excess. So we need it about there. Grab my scissors, make sure I cut the right bit. All right, where are we at? So there we go. So you wanna make sure as you go that nothing's getting twisted. So that looks good and now we'll attach our second clip. So same again, those are what the ones you want. R2, sorry, the R&R &R R2 outrigger clip. Look for the one with the S on it. You probably can't see that on the GoPro, but there's an S there for starboard. This is our starboard rigger. Look for the little bead. Bead signifies that's the bottom. So we're doing the top. So we do the top. You guys know how this part works. Grab your copper crimps. Bond sent me the copper crimps to rig up. I haven't used them before on my outriggers. And the simple reason we use them on these beautiful outriggers and on this beautiful black mono is because they look cool. Never be ashamed to make your stuff look cool. It's important, man. It all helps with the attitude on the boat. And I reckon the marlin know. So just create a little mushroom thing. Again, you don't need to do that. It's just a habit I like to get into. You can't do it on the other end anyway because it's under tension. Here we go. That's up snug. It's the right way around. Crimp that up. Beautiful. And you see? Black, mono, copper crimps. Looks cool. Image is critical. Right, so same again. We'll grab a crimp, we'll grab the bottom end of our halyard and we'll just lightly pull the halyard line through the crimp just to snip it off so everything doesn't go haywire when we go and put our pole back in our outrigger base. Check again, we've got no tangles. That looks pretty good, our tag line is a bit hooked up, but that looks good. You can see it's starting to take shape now, you can see how I'm layering the rigger system. Long one, next shortest, shortest. Cool, so all I've got to do now is pull this back through again, get the right tension on our top halyard. So same again, I'm just going to look for that same tension on the poles. That looks pretty good. So there we go. So now we set our next halyard. So I think it's important to note here that whilst this long halyard is setting the tension for the rigger, it's the only one that's doing that. Our second halyard, which is running our corner lures, we don't pull that all the way up to the pulley. We actually pull it about two thirds of the way up. And I actually like to have fairly light tension on this so that my clip, once there's a lure pulling on it, actually pulls clear of the top halyard, if you know what I mean. So I'm not cranking this down to add tension to the pole. What I'm doing is pretty much just bringing it to where it's just start, you can just start to feel the tension coming on, which is about there. You see, this is slack, and I'm pulling it to about there. And then, when that's up the pole, and I've got a lure on this, that'll pull out and get clear of that halyard. So I'll lock that off so I can adjust the halyard, pull that down again, get that tension right. So that's just starting to come tight now. That looks pretty good. And that should have enough sag to come out. So I think that'll be pretty good. Can unlock that. Should move up and down nicely. 
and you'll see that, I can probably do it from here, when that has a lure in it, that'll still be able to pull clear of that halyard. Which is a nice way to do it. Right, we'll get that all crimped off. Now we have a second halyard done. And that's nice, I like that, looks good. Looks good. So you can see here now, that's the tension. You can see the nice curve in the pole. All the pulleys are working nicely. So I've got both my lure halyards ready to go. And now what I've got to do is put in a third halyard for my daisy chain lures. The way my daisy chains are working, I'm running them off teaser reels in the top of the boat here, which run out the side of the boat, and they go through a pulley that's attached to my outrigger pole, and I can bring them in and out from here. But what I want to do is put a third halyard with a stainless steel ring in that I run my daisy chain through so that when I pull my daisy chain up onto the outrigger, I can pull that down and that'll pull the line coming off this down to an area where I can touch it, if that makes sense. I'm sure it'll make more sense as we um, rig the riggers up. So we'll get onto that. So, same again. We now go through the bottom, through just the one eyelet and then through our final bottom pulley. So again, we, we're going to be able to roughly guesstimate what sort of length we're going to need by pulling these tight and that's going to be about right. So we can snip that off. And this time, instead of attaching a outrigger clip, we are going to attach a stainless steel ring available from Bonds Lures which is going to have our line coming off our teaser reels through that and then attached to our outrigger and that gives us the ability of being able to pull our teasers in and out to the boat which is most useful when you've got a fish on you want to get them out of the way but once I rig up my teaser reels you'll see what I'm talking about tension on these is not very crucial we're pretty much going to just set the tension so it keeps everything tidy they're not load bearing at all but if they are load bearing it's very very light nice to get that nice and snug so it doesn't go anywhere crimp that up and we'll repeat the whole process again chuck the Riggers back in the bonds cracking out rigger bases and we'll get our halyard length about right. And I think what we'll do next is actually set up our teaser reel so that you can see the purpose of this third teaser halyard. So once again, just to stop everything swinging and going crazy, we'll put a loose crimp on. Cool, and we'll chuck the pole back into base. And our outrigger system is starting to take shape. I can actually do this part from the boat this is the least critical of the three halyards in terms of tension so we get our so that's our trolling tension happy with that nothing is twisted here it is actually twisted but it's only because it's come through you can see there everything's stacked the right way so all we'll do now To get this tent this length right. Same sort of idea, get it to a nice snug fit. Pretty happy with that. Slide that up, that looks good, that's gonna go in and out, no problem. And that's gonna be our teasers. How good. I might actually loosen this off now that we've got our length right. And I can get that crimp nice and snug. Motorbox going past. She's all going Hamilton today, team. And that is, once I snip that off, a completed rigger system. Now we snip this off. Put it back under our trolling tension. And there we have one completed outrigger system with everything running independently Twist that off a little bit, it'll sit better, there we go. Bit more tension, and there we have it. Everything working as it should, ready to catch them marlins. 
So now we will rig up our teaser reels and the teaser chain system. And we'll show you how that all works. Good stuff. So the next thing we're gonna do is put line on our Daiwa Tanacon 1000 teaser reels. We've got 150 pound Bonds monoliter. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we've got our teaser reels all spooled up. And what we're going to do now is attach a pulley that lives on our teaser reels. That there will clip onto the second guide on our outrigger. And on the end of this, we're going to attach a, another swivel. So I'll get that all crimped up. And then we can attach it to the outrigger pole and you'll see how this whole system works. A lighter, definitely worth doing this on these ones because the fish love to grab these teasers as you would have seen from some of our videos hopefully. If you haven't, go check them out. Tons of good teaser action. All right, that's gonna be all ready to go. So what we need to do now is get our rigger down and attach that to our rigger. Or you climb up on the roof and do it. So we've now, We've now clipped our teaser clip onto the top of the pole. I did that by standing on the roof rather than pulling the riggers down to save a bit of time. Now you'll see the point of our teaser halyard. So we'll have our teasers running clipped onto here. They'll be running back here. And this way I can attach them on the boat. I can pull that stainless steel ring all the way to up there. Now our teasers will be running. We can use our electric reels to control them. And then when I need to adjust or bring the teasers into the boat, all I do is bring that stainless steel ring down here, which will bring the clip to me where I can be in charge of the teasers. It's actually pretty important to make sure you put the your teaser line through the loop the right way which I went the wrong way and all that'll mean is you'll just it'll still work but you'll just get a funny twist at the end so if you do it right the first time in the morning should be all right when I'm got my pole in in the morning obviously your poles up for your steam out to the grounds where all your marlin are going to be and all I do is just put that around my Halyard tensioner, obviously, there'll be a bit more tension on your line. Like that, and that all sits cleanly like that. All ready to go. I also recommend when you're traveling to have all your clips and everything down at this end so they don't spin around each other. But there we go, team. That is one completed outrigger system, ready to slay. Clean, tidy, simple to use and actually pretty simple to set up too. So it's looking good, I'm stoked with that. Beauty. All right team, we've got our starboard rigger set up. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. We'll go through it a bit quicker this time. The theory's exactly the same. The only thing you've gotta make sure is that you're using your port outrigger clips and also remember you need to stack the halyards the same on the other side, your longest, line on top, next line, next longest underneath, shortest underneath that. And then also what I'm gonna do once I finish my port rigger is I'm gonna put a little bit of red insulation tape on that rigger just so we know that it's our port one. So I'll rip into that. And then once we've finished getting our outriggers done, I'll show you how to rig up the double purchase system on our dread drill. Hopefully you're following along all right. Let's get into it. Okay, so now, we're gonna add the next vital ingredient of our teaser system, and that's the dredge. So first thing I'm gonna do, being a new boat, I'm gonna get my dredge boom in the right position. I've got a good combination here. I've got Killwell's new adjustable Bonds dredge boom with the Winthrop butt, and I've also got the Exploding Fish 
360 rotating rod holders. So I can change the angle here. The angle I'm going to look for is about that. So as I spin the rod holder, that's going to have my dredge nice and high when I bring it out. And it's also going to run nicely with my lures and it's fairly much out of the way of my halyards. So, first thing you want to do when you're setting up a dredge reel is have a forward stay. I've had a cleat put here and what I'm going to do is create a loop in this piece of spectra braided line that every time I put my dredge boom in I can just pull it tight onto that. So I'll just get that measurement right. That looks a bit right and I'm going to create a loop here. So I can just loosen that off by using my exploding fish rod holder, spin it around, I can loosen that off and get my loop right. So I'll tie that loop, just measure it one more time, make sure I'm going to get it right. So I want it to be able to sit about there. Okay, so we've got our spectra loop length tied. I'll trim that off and you'll see that now when tension comes on to that dredge boom, this spectra that has got no flex in it takes all the load off your rod holders. Very tight, very good. Okay, now I've got a Seaborg Mega Twin 1200 from Daiwa that I've spooled up with Bond's hollow core dredge braid. 400 pound braking strain, and I'll chuck that onto our Winthrop butt. Once we've got this all secured, we will show you a very simple double purchase system that will bring your dredge in fast and easy. Okay, so what we're trying to do here with our electric dredge reel is create a Z pulley system, a double purchase system, that effectively halves the amount of load that the electric reel needs to pull in order to get your dredge in. So it's very simple to set up, but you need to get it right. What you need is a swivel, rod stand swivel, with a strong 400 pound snap swivel attached. Take your 400 pound Bonds dredge line up through the guides like we did in our riggers through the pulley at the end of the dredge boom and back to here. So that is forming our double purchase system. The reason we have this on a pulley is that that is what we're attaching our dredge to and that needs to be able to slide up and down our double purchase system. Sorry, our double purchase system here, like so. So, what I like to do, you don't have to do this, is slide a little bead on the end of your hollow core braid, just because we're then gonna tie another snap swivel to attach the other end of our line to our dredge broom. And it just, that little glow bead will stop your pulley getting all tangled up in your knot and your snap swivel. So I'm just doing a five or six turn uni here. Get that nice and tight. This is super strong, this line. Trim that up and tidy it up. Strong stuff. Get my light up and stop that end fraying up. And now you have created a double purchase dredge system. To finish it, all we're doing is attaching our snap swivel here. And when it comes time to run your dredge, you attach your dredge weight and dredge there. And when that'll move independently and when you're running the dredge out, you'll see here, that will just come out perfectly. But when you're pulling in, that is halving the amount of weight that will be coming in on your dredge. Obviously the dredge weight will stay the same. And the other beauty is of using, when you're using this thin braided dredge line, 
is that you can actually run a lighter dredge weight. I'm using the extra large bonds strip whip rate, a uh, strip dredge, sorry, and a six pound bonds dredge weight. And that's running my dredge nice and deep at about my first wake. So, all I have to do now, spin my boom back around, get my customized tension system, put that on the cleat, and we're away. So now I can control my dredge from here. I've got my halyards ready to go here, and it's a beautiful system. And we're all good. So there we go, team. All I have to do now is repeat the process on this port side to get my port daisy chain teaser system ready. But that's it. We are now set up to go game fishing. So hopefully you've been able to follow your way along that. It's pretty straightforward once you get your head around it. But we now have a completed set up game boat. Ready to go catch some fish. Nice. Choo.